His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of and be glad therein. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Greetings. My name is Pastor Walter Davis III. On the behalf of the officers and members of the Monks Grove family, we like to thank you for allowing us to enter into your home by stream. Here at the Grove, we believe that we are a warm-hearted church with a Christ-centered message. So it is my prayer that if you enjoy service in such a way, that if you want to attend personally, then you would come to 718 Monks Grove Church Road, Spartanburg, South Carolina, and join us for one of our services. Now, come on. Let us go into worship together.
this morning will come from Psalms chapter 1 beginning at verses 1 and the, the word of the Lord reads blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night that person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like shaft that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. I have read Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his holy word. Let us pray. Oh, gracious, kind, wonderful loving God of ours, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. This morning, Father God, we come before you, calling your holy divine name, knowing that you are the beginning and you are the end. You're the creator of all good and perfect things. This morning, Father, we ask for a blessing for those who have come out this morning, for those who are listening and watching this morning. Father, we ask for that you continue to keep your hands on each and every one of them, Father. And Father, this morning we call on you because we know that you are our God. God, we know that things are going on in this world. But if we're sure that we know that you're still in control of everything, we ask that you can continue to give blessing to those families who have lost loved ones in this virus. And Father, we ask that you continue to let the ones who are thinking they are in control, allow them to know that you are the only one who's in control. Father, we thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do. We thank you for your son who came and shed his blood so we can have forgiveness for our sins. And Father, this morning, as we get ready to hear the word, we know that you have placed in our, our vessel this morning, our pastor, the words that will feed the one who have come hungry this morning that they may leave him in a better way, that may reach out into the world and see people in a, in a different sight. Father God, we thank you for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. For it's in the holy divine name of your son Jesus, we ask it all, that all hearts say amen.
Father, we magnify you today. Oh, how we love you, God. Here we are, the seventh month into 2020. We thank you for keeping us, God, in what seems to be such a hellish year. But through it all, God, we know <laughs> that it's you that's continuing to bring us through. And God, that is you that will see us out. So we thank you right now, God, for loving us when we didn't even know how to love ourselves. God, we thank you right now for touching us with that hand of love this morning and giving us another opportunity just to be alive in the land of the living when the fact of the matter is many of us should have been in a mortuary somewhere, God. But God, your grace and your mercy hmm, gives us opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to get right what we've been unable to get right so many days before. Now, God, I ask blessings upon our sick and our shut-in today, Lord God. God, you know who they are without me calling them by name, Lord. But I just pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you touch them right where they are. Lord, it's my prayer today that your spirit will move through the jail houses as well, Lord. That it begin to heal and minister to those who don't know you for the part of their own sins. Lord, we know that this virus is breaking out inside of jails as well. So it's my prayer today, Lord God, <laughs> that you would watch over and keep them safe as well. We could go on and on, Lord. So much is going on. So much prayer is needed. So God, I'm going to stop right here and just ask as we move into the preaching hour. That you would have your way with me, Lord God. God, if I've done anything, if I've said anything that's not pleasing in your sight. Forgive me right now, Lord God. For God, I just want to be used by you. So have your way with me right now. And use me in spite of me. That your word, God, can move into the hearts and mind of your people till they may repent of their sins and turn from their wicked ways and surrender unto you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me say good morning, good morning to those that have tuned in with us by stream. Good morning to you. We thank you for allowing us to enter into your homes today by uh, computer, by phone, by tablet. Uh, we do not take it lightly. And so uh, we, the members and officers of Monks Grove, we thank you for allowing us uh, to come into your homes and share the word of God with you. And to the, uh, the 15 of y'all that are in here with me, thank you for being here this morning. Amen. Good morning to y'all as well. Uh, I'm not going to really uh, hold us long today. Uh, listen, right after service, right after service, we will have a uh, drive through communion. So uh, everybody, uh, y'all come on through and uh, get your communion and uh, let me see your face. Say hello and everything because I... I miss my folk. Yeah, I miss my folk. So y'all come on. And let's have communion today right after service. Turn to Psalm 1, please. Psalm 1. Psalm 1. And while you're turning there, um, I want to say um, I hear so much about I, I just be glad when 
2020 is over. I'm just ready for 2020 to be gone. Listen, even when 2020 is gone, it's still going to be the same. Okay, we're, we're not going back to how it used to be. So, you, you, you <laughs> I mean, what we have to do is we have to adjust and learn to live with the new norm. Okay, because this thing is not going away until the Lord is ready for it to go away. Amen, lights. And when God is ready for it to go away, then it will go away. But until then, we all need to take the precautions. Stay off the beaches. If y'all seen yesterday, they were all on the beach. They, they was wilding out this weekend. Stay off the beaches. Wear your mask. Do what you have to do to keep you safe. Your family safe. That's what we have to do. Amen. Psalm 1. I think I'm going to, uh, let's do, y'all read all of that, but I'm just going to read verse uh, 3. Verse 3. <laughs> All right, here we go. They they are like trees planted along the river bank. Amen. That's enough. Y'all y'all can y'all can read the rest of that. They are like trees planted hmm, along the river bank. I I just want to talk just for a little bit if I can. Planted for purpose. Planted for purpose. Hmm. That's pretty good. Planted for purpose. There's, there's a place that is 21 miles west of Odessa, Texas, in Eaton County, on Highway 302 called No Trees, Texas. Now, No Trees, Texas has that name because in 1946, the Shell Corporation moved into that town under the belief that underground was untapped oil. And in an attempt to get a greater access to the oil, oil that they thought was underground, they cut down all the trees in that town. And when they cut down all the trees in that town, they set up and built a plant there to go underground to get the oil that they thought was there. Now, to much to their disappointment, they discovered that there was no oil underground. And the saddest part about the story was that not only did they not find the oil, but the saddest part of the story is that years later, they, they, they still haven't been able to grow any trees in that town. That's why the town his name has been changed to No Trees, Texas, uh, because after they cut down all the trees, none, none ever grew back. So as a result, because there not being any trees uh, in its effect uh, to the ecosystem uh, of that town, because there are no trees, there are no birds. And because there are no birds, there are no bees. And because there are no bees, there are no flowers. And because there are no flowers, there are no, there's no grass. As a matter of fact, uh, there's no sign of any living being at all in No Trees, Texas, uh, because of the inability to have trees. See, see society needs trees. Why? Because trees are our are, are breathing partners. Amen. Humans and animals depend on trees and plants for oxygen. Trees take in carbon dioxide and, and, and then they release oxygen that helps to keep them clean from air toxins, uh, from finding its way into our systems. Uh, trees uh, don't just provide oxygen, but they help cool the earth by giving off moisture. Moisture in the air means rain and all living beings need water. Trees also provide cool 
environment uh, so that we, we can withstand the ultraviolet rays of the sun. Trees, trees cool the air uh, through the shading process uh, and allows the water from the evaporation to release into the air fresh dew every morning. We need trees. It is said, it is said that a 100 foot tree with 200,000 leaves can, can make up to 11,000 gallons of water in one season. In, a, in, in order uh, for the environment to be right, uh, trees have to be in good shape. Y'all gotta get this. Trees are vital to a good atmosphere and environment. Trees are necessary for an environment and atmosphere to be what they need to be. So it, it shouldn't be surprising then when David wanted to describe what it meant to, to be blessed uh, that he compared being blessed to like a tree. Woo! Yeah. The, the, the writer here in Psalm 1 starts this psalm by letting us know that the blessed life has nothing to do with the things that you have. If, 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 we, if we were to read Psalms 1 and 2, we would see that nowhere in the description would we see anything about things. But what we would see is things about how to live and who to hang out with. And that should bless somebody right there today because that lets us know that we don't have to have things to declare that we're blessed. What David lets us know in verse 1 when he talks about blessed is the person who does not follow the advice of the wicked people nor stands in the path of sinners or join the company of mockers. What David lets us know is we are blessed when we know who not to be connected to. Woo! Let me back it up one more time. He says that we are blessed when we know who not to be connected to. He says in the first verse uh, that get this get this uh, he says blessed uh, is having the ability to know who to have in your space uh, and whose space uh, to desire to be in and whose space uh, that you should never want to be around let me break that down uh, David said uh, that the person uh, who has enough discernment uh, to know who not to hang around is somebody that's absolutely blessed uh, that you're blessed uh, because you know when you're in bad company he said you're blessed uh, when you don't hang out in certain kinds of company. He went on to say you're blessed uh, because, yeah, you take your cue from the Lord. Uh, that you delight yourself in the law of the Lord. Uh, meditating on God's word day and night. Uh, and then David says uh, when you know the right company to keep uh, and the right book to read, uh, you'll be like a tree. Oh God, y'all missed that. Let, let, let me drop it one more time. Uh, when you hang out with the right people, uh, when you stay away from the wrong people, uh, when you stay in God's word, uh, you will be like a tree planted. <clears throat> now, in verse 1, you enter into an environment and become, watch this, become affected by the environment uh, that you find if you're not careful uh, because remember trees trees uh, make environments what they need to be yeah let me say it again trees uh, make environments what they need to be uh, so if you are a tree you have the ability to affect and change an environment uh, because of your presence uh, in other words uh, when you are blessed uh, you don't have to give in uh, to the atmosphere that may be around you uh, he never says uh, that you won't be around on the ungodly he never says uh, that you won't be in the proximity of sinners uh, he doesn't say uh, that you won't be in a space uh, of the scornful that's why I don't have time here Ali for some of these holy holy folk uh, always acting like uh, they ain't never been there and done that Negro please uh, let me tell you something what David said uh, is when you are blessed uh, and you are a tree uh, you can be in their presence uh, and you won't be so overcome by it uh, that you decide to hang out in it. Uh, he said uh, when you are blessed, uh, you can be in the space of the scornful, in the proximity of the wicked, uh, in the atmosphere of the unrighteous, uh, but you are stronger than the space uh, that you walked into. Uh, so you can be in that space uh, without becoming overcome by that space. Uh, and some of y'all should be thinking right now uh, oh, how God has kept you uh, in the midst of, uh, because 
because for some you're going to work every day in the midst of some ungodly and wicked people. As a matter of fact, on Sunday mornings when you come into the church, you're sitting right in the space of some sinners. But when your spirit is right, you don't have to give in to the atmosphere that's around you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, 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 they shall be like a tree planted by the rivers. Now, I have a problem. <laughs> I have a problem. I have a problem. David, I got a problem. Wow, you declare that we should be like trees, David. You are not clear on what kind of tree that we ought to be. <laughs> And I don't think that David leaves it open for our own choice as to what kind of tree that we should be. When you read through the Bible, you will discover that there are 33 different types of trees. So, 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 so I wish David would tell us what kind of tree to be. Is he telling us to be like the tree in 2 Chronicles 2 and 8, uh, the algum tree? Is he telling us to be like the tree in Song of Solomon's 2 and 3, the apple tree? Uh, or is he telling us to be like the tree in Isaiah 41 and 19, uh, the myrtle tree? Or is he telling us uh, to be like the tree in 1 Samuel 14 and 2, the pomegranate tree? Uh, or is he telling us to be like the tree uh, in Numbers 6 and 4, the vine tree? Uh, or is he telling us to be like the tree uh, in Isaiah 41 and 19, uh, the oil? tree uh, or is he telling us to be like the tree uh, in Ecclesiastes 12 and 5 uh, the almond tree uh, or is he telling us uh, to be like the tree in Psalm 37 and 35 uh, the bay tree uh, or is he telling us to be like the tree uh, in Genesis 30 and 37 uh, the chestnut tree uh, or is he telling us to be like the tree uh, in 2 Samuel 5 and 23 uh, the mulberry tree uh, or is he telling us to be like the tree uh, in Ezekiel 6 and 13 uh, the oak tree uh, or is he telling us to be like like the tree uh, in Isaiah 41 and 19, uh, the pine tree, uh, or is he telling us to be like the tree uh, in Ezekiel 17 and 5, uh, the willow tree, uh, or is he telling us to be like the tree uh, in Judges 9, uh, verses 8 through 15, uh, where the olive tree uh, and the fig tree uh, and the pine tree uh, are arguing amongst themselves? Uh, what kind of tree, David, uh, are you telling us to be like? Uh, we don't know uh, what kind of tree uh, we're to be uh, because we don't know. Uh, uh, we, we don't want to be like the trees in Judges 9 uh, where they are arguing amongst themselves uh, as to who's going to be the greatest uh, because we don't want to be trees uh, that's got to fight over significance. Uh, we don't want to be trees uh, that's got to cut other people down uh, in order to stand up. Uh, we don't want to be trees uh, that's got to step on one another in order to make ourselves feel tall. Uh, we don't want to be that kind of tree. Uh, so David, uh, what kind of tree uh, are you telling us to be? Oh God. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we need to know, David, what kind of tree that we're supposed to be. Are we supposed to be like the tree that is in the Garden of Eden? If that's the case, David, uh, we don't want to be like that tree uh, because then uh, we've got to deal with snakes crawling all around us uh, and hissing behind our back, uh, always trying to squeeze life out of us. Uh, we don't want to be like the juniper tree uh, that's in 1 Kings 19 and 5 uh, where Elijah came uh, and sat up under the tree uh, and said, I hate my life. Uh, I just want to die. No, David, uh, we don't want to be that kind of tree uh, because we don't want depressed people uh, sitting up under us. Uh, we don't want anybody trying to quench our spirit uh, or mess up our joy. And is there anybody that's watching right now uh, that can say, uh, I don't want to be a juniper tree uh, because I don't need the press people uh, sitting up under me. Uh, I don't need anybody around me uh, that looks like they've been sucking on lemons uh, and five miles of bad road. Uh, you can't sit up under me uh, and hate your life. Uh, but if you go sit up under me, uh, you better act like uh, you got some joy. You better act like uh, you you got a reason to praise him. You better act like uh, you got a reason to give him glory. There should be something uh, on the inside of you uh, that when you think of the goodness of Jesus uh, and all that is done for you, uh, that you don't have time 
there to be depressed uh, or anything. Uh, and is there anybody watching uh, or in the section world with me right now uh, who can say, I don't have a lot of money. I can't stand my job. My children are driving me crazy. My boot and got on my last nerve. I feel like I'm about to lose my mind. But, but because God woke me up this morning, hey, I refuse to be depressed. Because God woke me up this morning, I refuse to think or act like I'm all that in a bag of chips. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rise and shine and give God the glory since he woke me up. I'm going to rise and shine and give God the glory. I don't have a whole lot of stuff, but I'm glad to be alive. I don't have a whole lot of material things, but I'm glad to be alive. And, and, and that's the reason I'm really preaching as hard as I am and shouting like I am because I'm glad to be in the sanctuary when I should have been in the mortuary. But yeah, but since the Lord has saved me. And since the Lord and woke me up, I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hey, he woke me up this morning. And that's enough for me to give him glory. My big brother, Dr. Derek Miles, pastor of friendship in Louisville, Kentucky. He used to tell me all the time, boy, you got 10 reasons to give God praise. He says, you ought to just give him praise just because he woke you up this morning. Did y'all hear what he said? He said, you ought to give him praise just because he woke you up this morning. And anybody in here right now and those that are watching, you ought to be able to give God praise just because he woke you up this morning. So David... We really need to know what kind of tree should we be? Now, scholars suggest, scholars suggest that this is a palm tree. <laughs> now, now, if you know anything about geography and topography of the land, then you know that it was a dry desert place. And, and this tree, a palm tree, has the ability to prosper in places uh, where nothing should be able to grow. This tree right here, y'all, has the ability to grow with nothing around it to, to help it prosper in spite of the dry environment. And it has the ability here, Allah, to prosper in spite of what's around it because of what it's been planted in. Y'all got to get this. This is a tree that is planted, that has popped up in, in, in no, no Trees, Texas, if you will, where nothing but dead stuff ought to be. And in the midst of the deadness, uh, there pops up a blessing uh, because it's planted uh, by the rivers of water. Living water, y'all gotta get this. Uh, now, now we know in the Bible that water is often symbolic to the Holy Spirit. Amen? So, 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 so what the writer is saying uh, is when you are planted uh, in the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, you can be in an environment uh, where ain't nothing growing uh, and God will keep you blessed uh, because you're, you're rooted uh, and grounded it uh, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Y'all gotta get this. Okay, okay, okay. Let me, let me, let, let me, let me see if I can make it a little bit more clear. Let me see, let me see. Here, here, here you go. In Matthew 21 and 8, Jesus is riding into Jerusalem and the people uh, are begin, they begin to do something uh, as he's riding into Jerusalem uh, because they just realize uh, that the king of glory is coming. Uh, so, so, so what happened was, uh, is this here, they, they saw the palm trees uh, and they broke off the branches uh, and they begin to praise him uh, with the branches uh, that they broke off of the palm trees. Uh, so they broke something, Allie, off of a palm tree. Y'all ain't got it yet. Uh, here's what the devil, the devil messes up. Uh, the devil thought uh, that when he broke you, uh, that you would stop giving God the glory. But on the first Sunday in July, I'm looking for some palm tree testimonies uh, that can say, uh, I had some stuff broke off of me, but I kept on uh, giving God the glory. I had people to break me, but I'm still giving God the glory. And is there anybody that's watching right now uh, that can say, I had some people uh, to stay 
may take some stuff from me and break me, but I kept on giving God the glory. See, the devil doesn't realize that sometimes when he thought you'd be depressed because of what got snatched up from you and broke off of you, he didn't realize that sometimes your greatest shout is off of the very thing that got broke off. Can anybody be honest and testify right now that's watching or with me in here that sometimes your shout is for the stuff that got taken away? See, 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 so here's a question of maturity right here. Can you praise him in spite of what's been taken away from you? Can you give him glory for the stuff that's got broken off for you? See, the reason that a lot of people don't like that right there is because most people can't shout unless they receive something. But a real praise is not just when you receive, but a real praise is when you can shout when stuff gets taken away. So, so, now, when this palm tree here hmm, loses a branch, yeah, losing a branch is not the death of a palm tree. Because when it's planted <laughs> in a moist environment, uh, where it is, uh, where it's getting water on a daily basis, uh, around six weeks later, Deacon Bobby, yeah, something grows in place uh, of the branch that got broke off. Y'all got to get this. Here it is. Uh, here in South Carolina, yeah, here, here in South Carolina, we, we have palm trees. I noticed that we have palm trees. Uh, palm trees are uh, all over, especially when you get closer down to the to the, to, to the water. You, know, you begin to see more and more palm trees. Uh, but when I was living in Kentucky, I didn't see any palm trees. Uh, so I was trying to figure out the other day. I was trying to figure out why is it uh, that I didn't see any palm trees uh, when I was in Kentucky, like I see here in South Carolina. And I discovered here, Allah, that palm trees uh, need a tropical environment. Uh, now a tropical environment uh, is an environment uh, that's conducive to storms <laughs> uh, that when you're a palm tree uh, you don't have to ask God uh, to place you uh, in a storm free place uh, when you're a palm tree uh, you don't need yeah you don't need storm free living uh, to give God the glory Be but because yeah you're a palm tree uh, you can handle the storm uh, and weather the storm uh, see Christians uh, who need storm free conditions uh, don't have any faith, uh, but a real Christian uh, with real faith uh, won't mind being planted in a place uh, where storms are frequent. Uh, see, real faith uh, doesn't mind God uh, putting you in a place uh, where you got to deal with storms, uh, because sometimes uh, storms become the evidence uh, of just how much faith uh, you really have. Uh, every storm uh, is not a punishment from the Lord. Uh, every storm uh, is not the result of disobedience. Uh, every storm uh, is not the result of bad decisions, but sometimes a storm is a compliment from the Lord about how mature your faith is. So before you start talking about what somebody else is going through, maybe you should wish you were them, because if you ain't ever had a storm, then that says something about the level of faith that you have. Yeah. yeah. Now, listen. Have you ever seen a palm tree in a storm? Huh? Come on now, y'all live here. Y'all should have been to see something. You ever seen a palm tree in a storm? Yeah. Now listen, they bend from side to side. They rock back and forth. Huh? Yeah. They, yeah, they lean with it and rock with it. <laughs> I, be, I be listening to too much rap, don't I? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they lean with it. They, they rope its weight. And, but, but, but they never fall over. Why? Because when you're a palm tree planted in the rivers of the Holy Spirit, hey, uh, your anointing ain't going to stop the storm, but the storm, when the storm comes, uh, you're going to bend from side to side. You're going to walk back and forth. But one thing that won't happen is you won't fall over because there's something that's on the inside of you that keeps you from falling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me let, let me let me see if I can help you understand. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, a preacher friend of mine in Louisville, Kentucky, by the name of Dr. Eric Johnson, who pastors the Greater Galilee Church there in Louisville, he talks about a story about Joe Paluca. Y'all know what a Joe Paluca is? Dr. Johnson, I'm explaining to you. Dr. Johnson says one day, 
a little boy was playing with his Joe Palooka. Mm -hmm. And the little boy was rough with this Joe Palooka. He would slam it on the ground. He would throw it against the wall. He would kick it and hit it as hard as he could. But no matter what the little boy did to Joe Palooka, it would always pop back up. Um, so one day, the little boy's grandfather asked him, uh, why do you think um, that this thing that you're playing with uh, keeps popping back up? Uh, after everything that you do to it, uh, after you've kicked it, uh, it pops back up. Uh, after you slam it to the ground, uh, it pops back up. Uh, after you throw it against the wall, uh, it pops back up. Uh, what is it uh, that keeps making this thing uh, pops back up? Uh, and the little boy said, uh, he looked at his grandfather Granddaddy, and he said, Granddaddy, I heard you preaching uh, about a little man uh, that's on the inside of us. Uh, and I just believe, Granddaddy, that there's a little man uh, that's on the inside of my Joe Palooka that every time I hit it, uh, it pops back up. Uh, every time I slam it to the ground, uh, it pops back up. Uh, every time I throw it against the wall, uh, it pops back up. Uh, so, Granddaddy, I just believe uh, that the same little man uh, that's inside of us. It's the same little man that's inside of my Joel Palooka that keeps on making him pop back up. And that's, my nanny would put it like this. My nanny would say she was still living. Jesus is on the inside and he's working on the outside. He's in here. The Holy Ghost is in here because I've been through enough stuff that I should be flat on my back. But every time a storm comes, I may walk from side to side. Every time a storm comes, I may walk back and forth. But one thing is that my testimony is now unto him who is able to keep me from falling. And he's stopping me from falling because he's on the inside of me. So I may walk from side to side. I may lean back and forth. But he's keeping me from falling. Yeah. Have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed uh, the leaves on a palm tree? If you, if you have, next time you look, when you're riding, you see, look and look at the palm trees. Uh, the leaves on a palm tree, uh, they never go down. Uh, when they, yeah, when they grow, uh, they grow in an upwards position, uh, not in a downward position. Uh, even in storms here, uh, the leaves of a palm tree uh, are always up uh, because there's something uh, about knowing how to keep your hands up uh, in the midst of a storm. I've noticed that when storms come, the leaves just don't stay still in the storm, but leaves in a storm on a palm tree, they begin waving back and forth while they still up in the air. So if you want to know how to make it through your storm, when the wind starts blowing, you just start waving your hand. If you want to know how to make it through your storm, when the wind comes and trouble comes your way, just start waving your hands. When you feel like you can't make it or take anymore. You need to just start waving your hand and giving God the glory. Don't put your hands down, but lift your hands up and begin to wave your hand in the middle of your storm because God will. Hey. Yeah, I feel all right today. I'm done. Listen, 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 listen. Yeah, yeah. I'm on Facebook and I'm on Twitter and I'm on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, and I'm on Instagram. Now, I'm not like my grandmother. If, I hear, if my grandmother hears a dean go off, she'll pop up out of her sleep just to see what they're talking about. I don't do that. But I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, and I'm on Instagram. And one thing that I find amusing is how they are, they're, 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 they're supposed to be uh, saved people posting and tweeting their horoscopes. First thing in the morning. Hmm. Folk that I know say, I love the Lord. Mm -hmm. Are posting and tweeting what the horoscope says for today for cancer. What the horoscope says today for Leo. What the horoscope says today for Virgo. And, and, and watch this. And, 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 and they want to get a glimpse. Yeah. Uh, uh, of, the veil, uh, uh, of the future. Okay. But nobody can predict the future events. Amen? But this text lets us know that we can prophetically declare what our future will look like. You can know it 
before it happens. Woo! When you are blessed, yeah, you can prophetically declare, not in details, but you can prophetically declare a, 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 a categorical description of your future. Let me show it to you, and I'm done, I promise. Verse 1 says, blessed yeah, is the man who walks, present tense, not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands, present tense, uh, in the way of sinners, nor sits, present tense, in the seat of scorners. Uh, but his or her delight, yeah, present tense, is present tense, in the law of the Lord. Uh, and on God's law, uh, he or she meditates day and night. Uh, he or she shall be uh, like a tree. Uh, let me back it up and say it one more time. Uh, blessed is the person uh, who walks present tense, uh, not in the counsel of the wicked, uh, nor stands uh, present tense, uh, in the way of sinners, uh, nor sits uh, present tense, uh, in the seat of the scornful, uh, but his or her delight, uh, present tense, uh, is present tense, uh, in the law of the Lord, uh, and on God's law, uh, he or she meditates uh, day and night, uh, so because uh, the person is doing all the right, all of that right now, uh, he or she shall Shall be uh, like a tree uh, planted by the stream of water. Uh, they will yield its fruits uh, in the season, uh, and their leaves shall not wither, and all they do uh, shall prosper. Let me give it to you one more time. Uh, blessed is the person uh, who walks uh, present tense, uh, not in the counsel of the wicked, uh, nor stands present tense uh, in the way of sinners, uh, nor sits present tense uh, in the seat of scornful. But but his or her delight, uh, present tense, uh, is present tense uh, in the law of the Lord. Uh, and on God's law, uh, he or she meditates uh, day and night. Uh, so because uh, the person is doing all of that right now, uh, present tense, uh, he or she shall be uh, like a tree planted by the streams of water. They will yield the fruits uh, in his season, uh, and their leaves shall not wither, and all they do uh, shall prosper because when you know uh, that you're blessed, uh, you can declare the fruitfulness uh, of your future. Now, you don't know everything uh, that's going to happen in your future, but because you know uh, that you're blessed, uh, you can say, my future is looking awfully good. Uh, you can go on and lay your hand on yourself right now uh, and say, because I know I'm blessed, uh, my future looks better than my present. Uh, my my best days uh, are ahead of me. Uh, the rest of my life uh, is going to be uh, a blessed life. Uh, do I have about 12 of y'all in here right now today uh, that can declare uh, be, I'm blessed uh, and I know I'm blessed. Uh, I declare right now uh, what I shall be. Uh, I shall be healed. Uh, I shall be delivered. Uh, I shall be dead free. Uh, I shall be financially secured. Uh, my marriage shall uh, be what God desires it to be. Uh, I need somebody in here who ain't ashamed to stand on your feet with me right now and begin to give God the glory over what shall be. I'm not talking about where you are right now. I'm not talking about what you're going through right now. But is there anybody in here or watching by the stream right now that ain't ashamed just to wave your hand and say, my future shall be blessed. I see myself get free. I see myself healed. I see myself delivered. I see myself getting deeper. I see myself getting stronger. I see myself getting more mature. As a matter of fact, I, I declare it, Allie, over my own life. I speak it over my own life. The Lord is about to fix my future. God is releasing supernatural blessings into my life. God is releasing supernatural blessings into my future. God is releasing anointing into my life. So I'm not going to wait until I get there, but I'm going to shout right now because it's on the way. Goodbye. May the Lord bless you real good. 
Let's ride on out of here, Steve. Uh, but is there anybody that's watching right now, not a stream uh, or in the sanctuary with me, uh, that can shout over your future for better days are coming. Uh, sick right now, uh, but better days are coming. Uh, children acting crazy, but better days are coming. Uh, can't find a job, uh, but better days are coming. Uh, marriage is over, but better days are coming. Uh, crying yourself to sleep at night, uh, but better days are coming. Uh, nobody to talk to. Uh, but better days are coming. This shout is for better days. This scream is for better days. This horror is for better days. This dance is for better days. This run is for better days. This tear is for better days. This wave is for better days. This jump is for better days. I wish I had my folk in the sanctuary with me right now so I could hear you holler. Better days are coming. Better Better days are on the way. Better days are on the calendar. Better days are coming. Better days. Better days. Better days. Better days days are coming. Some of y'all need to start declaring some stuff. Some shall be blessings over your life. Yeah. You need to start declaring shall be blessings. You hear what I said? I shall get better. Yeah. I shall be established. You, you shall get it together. You shall be restored. Yeah. You need to start declaring some shall be blessings over your life. Everything that has been broken. <laughs> That's good. Everything that's been snatched shall be fixed. Your broken relationship with your family, your broken relationship with your children, the pain that you go through because of sickness in your body, hmm? the joy you lost because of a loved one dying, it shall be restored. You know, that, that's what the text says. I'm done, but that's what the text says. That because you are blessed, you can declare fruitfulness on your future. That's what the text says. It, it, it's not <laughs> that, that, that uh, you won't have any storms. Huh? It, it's not that you won't have any struggles. But yeah, yeah, but, but you have the right and the authority to declare that your future is fruitful. Big difference. Big difference. And so we need to learn how to speak the right language when we're going through a storm. Hmm? Some storms <laughs> are to mature us. Every storm ain't a punishment. <laughs> Listen, as a matter of fact, you learn your biggest lesson in the midst of a storm. So here it is. So when you come out of the storm, <laughs> you know not what to do to go back into that same storm. <laughs> So my question for you today is, what kind of tree are you? Be the right kind of tree. Yeah. You know, that song says that my soul has been anchored yeah. in the Lord. Be, be the right kind of tree. That when storms come, and they will, that no matter what, how hard it hits, F2, F1, whatever, them storms, how hard it hits, that your soul is anchored in the law that you can withstand yeah. and it's, you like Joe Palooka you may get knocked backwards but you'll pop back up get hit side to side but you're going to always pop back up why? because of what's inside of you mm-hmm. so listen as I'm done if you're watching today <laughs> 
And if you have never confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what I would like to do right now is extend that invitation to you. Right where you are, right where you're watching from, you can be saved. All you have to do is extend your hand and say, Father, forgive me. For I have sinned. And Lord, I'm sorry that I need you in my life. Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God, that God, that God raised you from the dead. So right now, Lord, I'm just asking <laughs> that you would come and clean me up, fix me, deliver me right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, if you are willing to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, my Bible tells me that you are saved. Now, what I need you to do is I need you to email me at rev wd4 at yahoo.com just email me and say Rev I watched the sermon I don't have a church home I need a church home I'll respond even if you have a church home if you're not growing where you go email me even if you're in another state now that we have technology praise the Lord you can still be a member of Monk's Grove and we'll watch over you and care for you. But you ought to come today. If you was here with me, I would say, come give me your hand, but give God your heart. But since you're not, I'm just going to tell you, extend your hand to the Lord. Put your hand and your heart into his hand and he'll never let go. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to have this worship experience this morning, God. God, we thank you for the preached word this morning. God, we pray that it can speak to our hearts, our souls, our spirits, and our minds, Lord. God, we pray that you can give us the strength to not walk in the way of the wicked God but to walk in righteousness Lord God we thank you for your many blessings God the blessings that we did not deserve Lord but because you love us so much you saw fit to bless us in spite of ourselves God God we thank you for the breath in our body God we thank you for the food on our table God, we thank you for the clothes on our backs, Lord. God, we thank you that our family circle was not broken, God. God, we thank you that even in the midst of this pandemic, God, you've been keeping us, God. God, we are blessed, Father, because of you, Jesus. And God, those who are going through a storm right now, right now Lord, we pray that you remind them that the storm is only here to strengthen them, Lord. It's only here to prepare them for what you have coming, Lord. 
God is only here to give them wisdom and strength, Lord. God, we pray that you help them to make it through from day to day, Lord. Not knowing what will happen tomorrow or happen next week, God. But God, we know that as long as we have you in our lives, that everything is going to be all right, God. God, we pray for our country, Jesus. God, with all of the confusion and the disorder, God, we pray right now, Lord, for your power, your wisdom, God. God, even in our city, Lord, where there was a shooting, God, God, we pray for the souls who were lost, Jesus. God, we pray for the families of those victims. And God, we just pray that you just intercede on their behalf, God, and that you just touch them, Lord, and allow them to make their way back to you, Father. Heal our land, Jesus. We need you right now. We need you like never before right now, Father. But we know that you still have us in the palm of your hands. And because we are in your hands, we know that you have the ability to turn everything around, Jesus. But right now, God, we pray that you help us make it through, Lord. We pray that you wrap your loving arms around us and remind us that you will never leave us nor forsake us, God. God, we love you. We thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Tierra, I just knew I knew it was going to be a good day when I saw you. Yeah, I just love to hear you sing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I knew when I saw her, I said, oh, it's going to be a good day. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <clears throat> now, don't get me wrong. Your mama can blow, too. But, but I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying. Hey, I see you looking at me. I had to fix it up real quick. <laughs> hey, man, listen, y'all. Listen. I'm going to tell you, we don't have to wait to 21 for 21 to get, I mean, for things to get better. We can declare right now that the rest of 2020 is going to be blessed. Amen? It's, and, and things. And so I, I'm just excited. Um, you know, I know it's being how things are and everything, but uh, I just believe God and I believe his word. And, and I'm just crazy enough to believe <laughs> that he'll do what he said he'll do. And so that's where, that's where I'm standing in things. Now, I'm not crazy enough to come back into full in-person worship right now. I ain't that crazy. Amen. We ain't going, we going, we going to hang out for a little bit longer and things before we come back. But uh, I do believe God. So this has been great to God be the glory. We want to keep in mind, please keep all of our sick and shut in in mind. We have many keep those that are whoever that have loved ones to go on uh, keep them in prayer as well now I will say this to everybody watching so y'all can understand <clears throat> I purposely told the deacons you can, they can call but not visit amen because of the coronavirus 
I, I've asked the deacons not to do visits, but I asked them to call. And so, uh, if, if that's the, so, if you haven't seen them, that's why. Because, and you should be understanding of that because of this virus. And so, and, and we have to protect not only you, but we have to protect our officers as well. All right? And so, uh, but when this is over, uh, we'll get right back to, to no, we ain't going to go right back to back, but we're going get, to get, get busy again. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so, I hope to see y'all outside for communion. If y'all on y'all way, y'all be safe. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. We'll see you the same time next Sunday. Let's go home, y'all. Father, we magnify and glorify your name, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We thank you because our blessed days are ahead of us. Lord, we ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus, as we, your people, your chosen generation, get ready to depart from this sanctuary, that we never be departed from your presence, God, that God, your hand of protection, will always be upon us to lead us and to guide us and to keep us safely out of harm's way. Now, may the grace of God rest, rule, and abide here forth and forevermore. And all the children of God sing together. Let's go ahead and do communion. Let's do communion.